I answer all y'all questions, but then y'all got to go. And the question I ask you is, how bad do you want to know? DreAllDay.com What's going on everybody? Dre Baldwin, DreAllDay.com. You are here at Q&A. This is Q&A number 45. This is Saturday, November 15, 2014. I'm recording this video on Friday. I record it always the day before the afternoon. So if you posted a question after that time, I didn't get to it. Or I didn't get to your question because it didn't come up in the comments when I pulled them up. You ain't signed in Google Plus or whatever the hell YouTube's doing. Post it again under the comments to this one. See if I get to it next time. Before we get into that, just got to remind y'all, WOYG.net. Same thing you see here, dot .net. That's where you can get all the merchandise. We got tanks, t-shirts, hoodies, hats, all that stuff that you need to put on your body. And we're going to get right into the q and I don't think I got anything else to tell y'all about. If you've been following the channel, you subscribe, you know about the move of the night I've been doing every day. I don't even know which one I'm going to do yet today. I ain't even recorded yet. But anyway, let's get right into the Q&A. For those of you who don't know how this works, basically I look at the comments from the previous week's Q&A. So this is Q&A 45. I'm looking at the comments from Q&A number 44. I'm reading these through from the first comment posted to the most recent. So the oldest comment goes first. So the person who was first to comment, they the first person to get responded to. I have not read any of these yet, so I have no idea what I'm going to be asked. I read the question, then I give my answer, and then we go rapid fire through the entire thing. If you want me to answer a question that you have, you leave it in the comments to this video. One question per person, please. That's the most that you can expect to get answered. If you ask, ask more than one, I might answer it, but I probably won't. So let's get right into the Q&A without further ado. First question comes from Travis. Says, Dre, what's your opinion on the reported argument between Kyrie and LeBron? Do you think Kyrie can be a team player and sacrifice for the better of the team? You ever played with a ball dominant guard? How do you have to change your instincts to gel with that player? That's too many questions, as I just said. What's my opinion on a reported argument? Well, it's reported. We don't know if it actually even happened. And I'm not a reporter. I don't go like giving all these opinions on things I hear from the media, especially these days that everybody basically is a media member because everybody got their social media and their social media profiles and everybody's putting stuff out people are sharing information that's not even founded on anything that's actually true so i have no opinion on it we'll see what happens in the actual games that's all i got to say about that the annoying asian says how would you break down a study game tape do you watch footwork or the way quote unquote they react to situations well, there is really no how. You watch it, you watch for whatever it is you're watching for. So some players watch it, they may be paying attention to footwork. Some players might, or coaches or spectators or whoever might watch it to see how the team moves with each other, how they move, how they move as one unit, offensively or defensively. You might be looking at how somebody's setting the screen. You might look at how somebody throws a pass, how somebody handles the ball when they're dribbling, the way somebody shoots. You look at all those things. So there is really no how. There are a million different variables you could look at when you're watching game film. So there is really no how to it. You just watch it and watch for whatever you're watching for. You got to figure out, first of all, why you're watching the game tape. So if you don't know that answer, then you shouldn't be watching it in the first place. Next question. Noah Swan says, does working your game merchandise ship to Europe? Of course it ships to Europe. I don't think there are any businesses these days that don't ship internationally. So yes, we ship internationally. Ahmed Masu says, where do you think all the elite NBA big men have gone? Well, I don't think they've gone anywhere. The game has just evolved, but the game has moved. There are more players who can play both inside and outside. It's just the way the players are developing. So it doesn't mean that the big men are gone. You could consider Dirk Nowitzki an elite big man. He's big. He's 6'11". Chris Bosh, the same thing. The game's just developed differently because the game has evolved. JJ Robidu says, who is my favorite NBA player who's in the league right now? And nobody. State of Nate 802 says, is making it to the league a goal that you plan on accomplishing? Well, you have to see, you have to watch. People ask me questions like that every week. And the answer is always gonna be the same. You're just gonna have to watch until you see me show you something or hear me tell you something. Ricky Gutierrez says, Dre, thanks for answering my question. He says, how tall are your parents? My parents are like five, seven and five, nine, something like that. Trayvon Cannon says, Dre, basketball tryouts start November 14th today. So Trayvon, I hope you did good at tryouts. I wanna say thanks for doing what you do. I work and practice the drills every day. I'm looking forward to the season. I know this progress and it's all due to you. Well, you're welcome, Trayvon. He says, if you could choose any player in history to take a game winning shot, who would it be? His choice would be Kobe. My choice would be Michael Jordan or Reggie Miller. 
It's On says, what happened with the Dre Baldwin Verse 1 Federation Kickstarter? Well, It's On, you can look that up. If you Google it, you'll probably see it. The page probably still there. Harry Sherwood says, Dre, lots of people refer to Stephen Curry as the greatest shooter in the world, possibly of all time. Do you agree? And thanks for helping me become a better player. Well, you're welcome, Harry. I think he's the best shooter right now. Do I think best all time? No, because he's going he to have to keep putting in the work year after year, just like all the other greats did. you got to keep doing it for an extended period of time. And Stephen Curry just hasn't been around long enough to claim the greatest ever, but right now, definitely. MHW2KTV says, I played for two years now. I trained very hard since I started. He's now 14 years old. But for some reason, when I try out for a team, players who are my friends, who are nowhere close to being as good as me, they play better. As a lack of experience, my problem, my averages last season were, and he tells me his stats, but I feel like I'm competing on a much higher level. Well, MHW, you're the one out there playing, so you tell me what the problem is. I didn't see you play. I didn't see your friends play. I wasn't there when it happened. You were there. You're the one who it happened to, so you tell me what the problem is. If you don't know what your problem is and what you need to get better at, then how is anybody else going to tell you? I'm True Skills, says Dre. You ever got into an altercation on the court? If yes, then why? Yeah, of course, I've gotten into plenty of altercations on the court. And if you go to the Dre Stories YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Dre Baldwin, you'll see me actually talk about that in a couple videos. The Beast Mod says, Dre, you ever got dunked on? Yeah, I've been dunked on before. Nothing crazy, nothing highlight worthy, but yes. MJ back 233 says, Dre, I had tryouts this morning. I dunked on someone. Do you think that got me a guaranteed spot? No, probably not. But I think people will remember if you dunk on somebody, you could probably ask the coach if you got a guaranteed spot. Then you'll know for sure whether or not you do. Harry Wood says, what do you think collegiate coaches look for in players? They look for players who can play. Same thing that coach at any level looks for. There's no one skill that any every coach in the world is going to be looking for. They look for players who can play. So if you're that player, you don't have to worry about what the coach is looking for. The only people who got to worry about what the coach is looking for are players who are not that good because they got to concern themselves with my, what might go wrong. Players who can play don't come into the gym worrying about what the coach is looking for, do they? They just go in there and play because they already know. The proof is going to be right there in front of your face. Little Matt says, how was my day today? Well, it's only 11 o'clock in the morning. My day's going great. Thanks for asking. Basketball 23 Shoes says, I feel I have very good handle, but when someone full court presses me, I don't try to right moves and the ball gets stolen from me. And I do all these ball handling drills, but I don't feel like I had many in-game moves. Well, basketball, you need to play in more games. That's why you don't have any in-game moves, because you're not playing in enough games. Practicing by yourself and playing the game is two different things. The practice that you do by yourself will translate into games, but you have to actually play in games so that you can learn to translate those skills. It's not just going to happen just because you practice. you got to play in the games. You're going to get the ball stolen from you. You're going to get your shots blocked. You're going to have bad games. You're going to get scored on. All that stuff. you got to go through that to get good in-game experience. Experience means you went through the ups and downs. So you can't avoid that. It has to happen. Next question. Ran Air says, you ever experienced racism while playing overseas? Got to share an experience on how I dealt with it. Not anything that comes to me immediately, so no. Royal Freshness says, I'm in grade 10. I was wondering what NCAA scouts or D1 coaches look for in a point guard coming out of high school. Are their expectations reasonable? Do they expect all their players to be six foot basketball phenoms? I'm gonna read this whole thing because I think a lot of you may be thinking along the lines of what he's saying. He says, is making a YouTube highlight mixtape help with the recruiting process or is it a waste of time? I'm constantly watching Baller's Life videos to improve my game as a point guard. But after those amazing players graduate high school, it's like no one recruits them despite their amazing mixtapes and they just disappear for the D1 circuit. So I'm gonna go through this, I'm gonna go through this entire statement because I feel like this applies to many players coming out of, who are in high school, going into high school, coming out of high school, even you college players. Even you spectators who may be thinking the same thing he's thinking, first of all, he said he's in 10th grade. He's wondering what NCAA scouts and D1 coaches look for in a point guard coming out of 12th grade. First of all, Royal Four Freshness. You're in 10th grade and you're worrying about what a scout is looking for for a player coming out of 12th grade. Why? Are you representing some 12th grader? Are you his agent? You a parent? What are, why are you worried about a 12th grader when you're in 10th grade? You need to play good in 10th grade, 11th grade, and 12th grade before you even worry about what an NCAA scout or a D1 coach is looking for. Or you could just say 10th and 11th grade. You got to play good those years first before any NCAA scout would even give a damn that you exist. 
Yeah, I know it's players who got scouted in ninth and 10th grade, but that's probably not you, which is why you're asking this question. It's probably not, and it's not 99% of players. And we're gonna get to that also in a later statement that you made. So what they look for is the same thing I told the questioner earlier. Play, scouts and coaches look for players who can play. Doesn't matter what position you play, there's no one skill. A scout doesn't go in the gym and say, I need a point guard, and they have to be able to pass. A scout's looking for a player who can play. Because if I walk into a gym, if I'm a scout, and I say, all right, I need to find somebody who can pass, but I walk in the gym and the best point guard in there is he scores a little bit more than he passes, and I'm still paying attention to that guy. If I got a spot for him, if he's the best player in the gym, that's the player that I want if I'm representing a school that's at the caliber that I could get him. Now, say if I'm at a lower level school and there's some bigger level schools, that kid might not pay attention to me because I'm at a lower school. But that's a whole different conversation. <clears throat> Scouts and coaches look for players who can play. And again, for the 50th time, I had to say this on this channel. If you are playing or going to a tryout or you trying to get scouted or found or recruited or whatever, and you're worrying about what the coaches are looking for, it's probably because your game ain't good enough. If your game's good, you don't have to worry about what the coaches are looking for because you just walk in the gym and show your game and that'll be enough. If you gotta worry about what they're looking for, it's probably because your game is deficient and you need to work on your fucking game so you don't have to worry about what the coaches are looking for. If you're getting into a game or you're thinking about your recruitment and you're worrying about what they might be looking for, it's probably because you don't have it. Because if you have it, you ain't got to worry about it, right? So if a girl says, I'm looking for a guy who's tall, and you're worrying about whether you're tall enough, you're probably just not that tall. I mean, that's not the best example. But anyway, let's get right back to the question. <laughs> he says, are their expectations reasonable or do they expect all players to be six foot basketball phenoms? Well, the the wording of your question, Royal for Freshness, tells me that you probably lack, that you definitely lack confidence in yourself because you're saying, are they reasonable or do they expect people to be six foot basketball phenoms? This means you're basically putting yourself as the opposite of a six foot basketball phenom. So you're obviously saying a six foot phenom is up here and you're down here. You're here at the reasonable level and then you got the phenoms up here at the other level. So you're saying that you're not that. These are two things you need to do. Number one, work on your fucking game so you don't have to worry about what nobody else is doing so you don't have to put yourself as opposed to the phenoms. You basically call yourself reasonable. I've never been impressed by a reasonable basketball player. And you just basically call yourself a reasonable player. So if you consider yourself to be reasonable or you consider yourself to be the type of player that a reasonable coach will look for, you're probably just not that good. You just need to work on your game. And that has nothing to do with a coach or a scout's opinion. It has nothing to do with ball is life or all this other bullshit you're talking about. It has to do with you and the work that you have not done yet. And that's it. And the other part, he says, are the expectations reasonable? Listen, coaches and scouts are human beings. Okay, Human beings, each human being is wired completely differently. Even if they're in the exact same job and competing against each other, they're humans. Human beings... I can't speak for another person's expectations. You won't know a person's expectations unless they tell you. And a lot of times they're gonna tell you a lie if you ask somebody what they expect. People's expectations is an internal thought process. So I can't speak for what a coach expects. A coach goes to a gym to see what's there and if there's somebody there he wants, he goes after them. If there's nobody he wants, he doesn't go after them. That's all there is to it. Can you play? You can't control whether a coach wants you. A coach might walk in the gym and you could be the best player in there, but if you a guard, and all he wants is a power forward or a center, then he's not gonna pay attention to you because he already got the guards that he wants. You can't control that. And if he's the only coach in the gym, then guess what? That day, no coach saw you who was interested in you. But you still gotta go out every day and control what you control, effort, attitude, and the work that you put in. And I've been saying this for years. A lot of players, y'all get so caught up in thinking about what everybody else is doing, thinking, saying, expecting. You forget to focus on yourself. And then a year goes by, you haven't put in no work because you've been worried about everybody else. And then you ask, you know, how can I get better? Why is anybody recruiting? Because you paying attention to everybody else. You got to pay attention to you. That coach ain't worrying about you. He worried about himself. And himself's job, himself for him, is to find the best player he can find. Are you that player? If you can't answer that question definitively with a yes, then you know what you need to do. And if you can answer that question definitively with a yes, then you ain't worried about what a coach is looking for because you know you're it already. Does that make sense? Let's get to the next part of his question because this is a this is actually a pretty good question even though he asked me like four or five questions. He says, is making a YouTube highlight mixtape help with the recruiting process or is it a waste of time? Well, first of all, 
for you and all players out there, the players don't control the recruiting process for the most part. They, of course, you had the elite players who you see on the, the million view mixtapes or in the magazines. Yeah, those players kind of control their recruiting because they're so highly coveted. But guess what? 99% of you, 99 out of 100 of you watching this video, you don't control the recruiting. The coaches control the recruiting because they decide if they want you or not. So if you want to go to school XYZ and they don't want you, then you're, you have no control over their recruiting. If they do want you, then they want you and they're controlling it. Whether they want you or don't want you, they're 100% in control. So a mixtape doesn't control or help with the recruiting process. The recruiting process is controlled and dominated by the school, not by the player. Like I said, for 99 out of 100 of you. And most of you, I know you got the, you shouldn't t talk down on kids' dreams and you should tell them they get uplifted. Don't tell us what we can't do. Listen, fuck all that. 99 out of 100 of you will be at the mercy of the school, okay? Maybe one person watching this video, you'll dominate the recruiting and you'll tell the schools what it's gonna be. 99 out of 100 of you, they're gonna tell you what it's gonna be. So just accept it. If you are still worrying about what a coach is looking for, guess what, you won in the 99. Now, is making a YouTube highlight mixtape help? Does it help, period, help you get seen? Yes, a YouTube highlight mixtape is just more exposure quote unquote the word the players like to use a lot of times is another way for people to see you if the highlight mixtape is actually good if it shows you in your best light shows you displaying your best abilities then yes it can get the attention of someone and remember when we talking about college recruitment you can only go to one school you can't go to 10 schools you can only go to one so you only need one coach to believe in you and to make you an offer for you to get what it is that you came for so does a highlight mixtape help the situation does it help your situation I believe if you put yourself in the right light, you show skills, you show that you actually can play and you get somebody's attention, then it absolutely helps. I mean, it couldn't hurt unless you want a highlight mixtape looking terrible. I've never seen anybody's highlight mixtape make them look bad, at least for the most part. Now, what else does he ask? He says, I'm constantly watching Ball is Life videos to improve my game as a point guard. Let's stop right there, okay? <laughs> You're watching Ball is Life videos to improve your game as a point guard. Now, I don't watch much YouTube, believe it or not. But as far as what I've seen from Ball is Life, Ball is Life are highlight tapes. All right? They make highlights. They don't tell you, all right, this is how you develop this skill. This is a fundamental that you need to work on. Ball is Life is highlights. They're showing highlights of the best players that they can find, the stuff that they know is going to make people watch and share and tweet the videos out or whatever the fuck their goal is ball is life is not a player development entity they're not there to help you develop your game all right somebody who does help players players develop their games the kind of stuff i put out helps people develop their games and not to say that i'm the only one i was the first one and i've done the most of it, it just to mention that but there are a bunch of channels out there or people out there i'm sure who can help you develop skills ball is life is not a channel you need to watch to develop your game Ball is Life is something you watch for entertainment. And I don't think, if, the, if somebody who runs Ball is Life was listening to me talk right now, I think they would 100% agree. They make entertainment, highlight videos. You can't learn how to play basketball. You're a 10th grader. You want to become a college player? You're not going to learn that from watching Ball is Life videos. You're going to learn it from working on your game and actually developing some real skills that can be used in a game. You can't go from not good to the highlights. You can't skip over it. There's, there's a whole big gap there. It's just like players come to me and they be like, yo, Dre, can you teach me how to do the move that Kyrie Irving did last night? And I try to explain to players, like, Kyrie Irving was working out and practicing basketball probably for 15 years before he was in the NBA getting highlights. You can't just skip over the 15 years that he put in work that nobody was paying attention to. And somebody had mentioned, oh, well, he had highlights in high school. But you understand what I'm saying, the semantics of it. It's not about highlights he was doing work practice on his own and nobody knew about that isn't on tape this that can't be found on youtube that that 15 years of work that led to the highlights you can't just skip over oh i've been playing ball for two years or five years or six years or whatever however long you've been playing to doing highlights of an nba player Kyrie didn't do it he had to put in that work for years before he got to that level and it's the same thing you looking at these ball is life mixes yeah, I know those players are high schoolers, a lot of them, but guess what? You ain't that player. You are you. Do you got a mixtape highlight on Ball's Life? You probably don't since you're watching them and trying to learn your game. If you want to learn game, you got to start with a fundamental base. 
which means you gotta have some roots in the ground first before you start blossoming leaves and flowers and seeds. You gotta get some fundamental basis to your game by working on your skills. You're not gonna learn basketball by watching highlight tapes. That's like if I wanted to be a golfer. Now golf is not a good example. Let's say I wanted to be a basketball player and I was just starting the day, so I just start watching the NBA top 10 and trying to just do the stuff that they do. If you wanna go straight from no skills to the highlights and skip over all the fundamental work, the years of fundamental work that's necessary. It's not two years, not three years. We're talking five, ten years of fundamental work is necessary for you to be a, a good college level, forget about the pros, but a college level player. You got to put in the work, the basics work before you worry about the highlights. So you're not going to learn it. You're not going to learn the basics by watching highlights. That just doesn't make sense, does it? And what else does he say? He says, I watch these videos to improve my game as a point guard, but after these players graduate high school, it's like no one recruits them despite their amazing mixtape has just disappeared for the D1 circuit. Well, I don't know anything about that. I don't follow college basketball or high school basketball at all. You're saying no one recruits them? How would you know that? I don't think you have any information to actually prove that no one recruits them. And I, don't think, I think that's a false statement. You say they just disappear for the D1 circuit. I think that's also false. So we're not even going to address those two. And the third thing. So let's put these together. Everybody who's watching. He says, I watch Ballers Light Tapes to improve my game. But these, he says, I want to go D1, right? He wants to go D1. He watches Ballers Light Tapes to improve his game so he can get closer to being D1. But the players he's watching, he says, it seems they don't go D1. So do you notice that there's some type of conflict there? You want to go D1, the players you're trying to learn from didn't go D1, then why do you keep watching them? That doesn't make any sense. So Royal for Freshness, I think you need to take a strong look in the mirror. It has nothing to do with Ball's life. It's not about those guys in the highlights. It's not about the coaches and scouts that you keep talking about. It's all on you. You need to develop your fundamentals by working on your fucking game. I done put out 4,000 of them already. If any of you mastered half of the stuff that I done put out on YouTube already, would none of you be worried about what a coach or scout is looking for? Because a coach or scout would be looking for you. Next question. Sal Rosales says, where do you get your weekly motivations from or do you just make them up? Or well, is a combination of getting them from, no, no idea is 100% original. So I might be listening to some personal development audio, I might be reading a book, I might read a magazine or a blog post or a tweet. I might say something when I'm talking to somebody, somebody might say something to me. And an idea comes from that, I always write my ideas down and then I flush them out like, okay, this could be a blog post or I can make a motivation video about this. Or I might post this on LinkedIn or I might make a video on this channel about this. So it all just, everything in my environment I use could possibly end up as material. So it's not like I'm reading a book like, all right, this is my book of motivations. All right, now I need a new motivation video. Let me turn to page 25. That's not how it works. It just comes from, there's a confluence of things. So I don't just make them up. They don't just come to me out of thin air. Everything comes from something that came before it. Next question. Kevin Wanata says, how to be the best small forward? Well, just develop your game as a player. It has nothing to do with the position. Every player has their own game. So if you look at the small forward position, you got a LeBron James, you got a, you could even say a Kyle Korver, you got a Kevin Durant, you got a Kawhi Leonard, you got a Rudy Gay or whatever other player you want to name. No, none of their games are exactly the same. So there is no best way to be a small forward. You got to figure out what your game is, Kevin, and then develop that as far as you can develop it. If you don't know what your game is, then worrying about how to be the best small forward makes no sense. Juan Coronel says, I live in Colombia, there's no gyms here. I can only play on outdoor courts. People keep telling me to stop working out so much because they say it's bad for your knees. And his question is, is hooping outside bad for your knees? Juan, this is the problem, all right? It has nothing to do with hooping outside. The problem is you need to learn how to use your own brain. And don't ask me a question that's based on what somebody else told you. Ask yourself a question. Does what this person said make sense? Does this person know what they're talking about? If so, how do they know it? What experience do they have to be telling me this in a way that they know what they're talking about? If you can't answer those questions, there's no need to bring me the question. Think for yourself and don't bring me a question that somebody else said unless you know they know what they're talking about. And if you know you know what they're talking about, then you don't need to ask me, right? Next question, Killer Instinct 24 says, Dre, I know I'm the best player on my team. My coach knows it too, but 
How do I get exposed to Kyle Scouts and my coach won't give me enough playing time? I'm a top scorer, but I feel like I could do better if I get decent playing time. All right, so I already knew what was coming in this question as soon as I read that first statement. He says, I know I'm the best player on my team and my coach knows it too. Okay. If your coach knows you're the best player, then why aren't you getting playing time? That doesn't add up. So your coach is not going to sit you on the bench. The coach is not going to sit his best player on the bench and have a bunch of other people playing ahead of him if he really thinks you're the best player. So let's first of all knock out the bullshit in your statement. Your coach does not know you're the best player. Actually, your coach doesn't even think you're the best player. That's why you're not playing. Now, you claim that you're the best player. If you're the best player and you really believe that, go to the coach and tell him, hey, I'm the best player. Why aren't I playing more? And I want you to come back next week in the Q&A and let me know what he said. I'm not even addressing the rest of that question because you can't. your question is based on a, a bullshit fallacy. I don't know if y'all players think that I'm supposed to be impressed by you telling me that you think you're the best player then telling me you're not playing. If you're not playing, you're not the best player. All right, I don't know what other way to put that through to you. If you're not playing, you're not as good as you claim to be. Don't tell me you're the best player while you're sitting on the bench. You're not the best player. You're the number six or number seven player. And that's basically your playing time is going to reflect that. Next, James HD says, do you continually make videos for your own pleasure or do you make them for your following? Well, it had to be either or. Next question, Kaiser Jizer says, Dre, thanks for the great vids. They helped me change my outlook on basketball. You're welcome. His question is, can I recommend one of my programs to help with mental consistency or videos to help with mental consistency? Because he struggled with his abilities. One month he plays good, next month he plays bad. Kaiser, I suggest you take a look at two of the written books that I've written, not hoop handbooks, but written books. One of them is called The Mental Handbook, the other is called The Mirror of Motivation. You can get either one of those books on iBooks or Amazon. Just search my name and the title and you'll see it. Next question. Worm Chemistries, what do you think is the weakest part of your game right now? Somebody asked me this like two weeks ago. I don't know, you had to play against me and then you can tell me if you win, that is. Zach Pate says, I played guard since sixth grade, two guards since sixth grade. I'm getting ready to try out for my freshman team. All off season, I worked on my shots and dribbling, but now it's time for tryouts. Only one big man is trying out. What should I do if I move to forward and I'm not ready for that move? Well, Zach, you ain't got no choice. If you get moved to forward and you're not ready, then you're going to get embarrassed and you ain't going to make the basketball team. So there is no what should you do. <laughs> ain't no last minute changes you can make. Either you can play or you can't. The same thing I've addressed five times already in this Q&A. If you get moved to a position and you're not good enough to perform there, or at least you can't prove that you can perform there, then you won't be on the team. And then you'll have another year to work on something else. Stephen B says, what's my career high in points? My career high in points professionally would be 39. That was in Mexico. Gamer Bros says, Jay, I got cut from my freshman team because my mother would not let me get a physical and I wouldn't have made it anyway because all the players are so much taller and stronger than me. I'm about five foot nine. He says five nine to six feet. That's like a three inch window. That's a pretty big difference, uh, Gamer. But anyway, he says, I can dribble decent, but my shooting form is horrible. Is there a way I can go into my sophomore year and have a lot of college scouts watching me? Is there a way? Yeah, probably be the best way probably be you playing very well for the team your freshman year. Since you didn't make it, that probably isn't an option. And this goes back to the same question the kid asked me earlier. You in, t in ninth grade, what are you worrying about college scouts for? If you don't play good through 10th, 11th, and 12th grade, you won't have to worry about college scouts because you won't be playing college basketball. So you need to worry about where you're at right now Play good there before you worry about the next level. That's like somebody 14 asking me how they get to the NBA. Well, first of all, you got to be good as, four, as a 14 year old before you worry about being an NBA player. You are in ninth grade. You got cut from the team. How can you go into your sophomore year and have scouts watching you? Well, first of all, no scouts are going to be watching you because no scouts have ever, ever heard of you and they've never seen you because you're not on the team. So what you need to do is stop worrying about college and worry about high school. Since you're in ninth grade, you just started high school. Why are you worried about college? Work on your fucking game using the videos and programs I have provided for you right here on YouTube and at hoophandbook.com. That's what you need to do. It's not about your mom. It's not about the other players who are taller and stronger. It's not about college scouts. It's not about your height. It's about the, your lack of work, your attitude, which has you making excuses, and the fact that you haven't played in enough games. Those are three things that are all under your control and you need to get them under control. 
Next, Shaquille Manji says, Dre, when it comes to weightlifting for jump training, should you do low reps with high weight or high reps with lighter weight or a mix of both? Well, it would take a combination of both, but it's not even that simple. You would need to, first of all, get your information from someone who knows what they're talking about. And I'm not a jump jumping coach. I'm not a, what's the word, certified strength and conditioning coach. That's the type of person you need to talk about, that talk to. That would be somebody like my guy Jacob from Jump Manual, which you can check out at dreallday.com slash jm, or Maria, or dreallday.com slash jump, either one or Maria, who is the author of both Hoop Handbook and Position of Power at hoophandbook.com, the website. So those are people you should probably get your information from. Both of them are accessible via email. The Habby007 says, I lost my shot in my holidays. I practiced a lot and his shot went really bad. Help me. Well, Habby, what you want me to do? What exactly do you expect me to do if your shot's not good? You need to get on the court and work on it. There's nothing I need to do for you. You need to do that for yourself. Because next time your shot goes bad or some other part of your game goes bad, you can't come crying to YouTube about it. You need to go put in the work and figure it out. Next question. Jacobus Bigelis says, what to do if I play really good? I can beat all the players on my team one-on-one. -on -one. But I really hate when they ain't passing me the ball. When it's game time, they know I'm good and I can own them, but they won't pass it to me. And what should I do sometimes I pass? and I play point guard and I have to control the ball and pass, not them. Well, Jakubas, guess what? If you're a good player, you don't have to worry about anybody passing you the ball because you already have it. So if nobody's passing you the ball, it's probably because you're not as good as you think you are. The same thing with the earlier question. Players telling me how good they are and then telling me something that obviously shows that nobody else agrees with you. Nobody else around you agrees that you're the best player or that you're, you can own everybody else, like he said in this comment. If you can own them, then you be owning them. Not you can own them, you do own them. Either you can or you do. Everybody can be the best player, but there's only one best player. And obviously from your questions, Jakubas, and you know this deep down outside of this bullshit that you put in the comment, you know you're not the best player. So you need to develop your game and develop your performance in the game so that you can actually live up to the claims that you're making. Next question, Yoel Gide says, how can I develop muscle memory in my shot? I have a good shot in my opinion and in many other people's opinions too. <laughs> but for the past year, I've been struggling to keep the same form. I stopped playing for a while. My shot hasn't been the same. Still goes in when my form doesn't look good or feel right. It feels like I'm shooting a different way every time. Can I please help? Well, y'all, there's nothing I can do about your actual shooting form because the only person who can shoot the ball is you. But what I'll do when a lot of players ask me, can I help them? Usually what I tell you is I can tell you how to help yourself because that's what a lot of you need to do. You don't need to go find help. You need to figure out how to help yourself, but that's what I'm gonna do for you. I'm gonna provide for you the information and the knowledge so that you can help yourself. Because once you learn to help yourself, you become self-reliant, and this will transfer over into a whole bunch of other parts of your life that have nothing to do with basketball. But anyway, you can develop muscle memory in your shot the same way you had it before you stopped playing, which is probably by you practicing a whole lot, putting a whole bunch of shots up until it felt right. Not that there's certain thing you had to do to make it feel right, but you practiced until it felt right. And nobody told you that, you just did it without thinking about it. The problem with your form now probably is number one, you thinking about it a lot. And number two, you think there's some solution outside of yourself that's gonna fix everything. There's not, you are the solution. If you want some more detailed information on shooting, you should look up the handbook written by my guy, Coach Hoover over at Pro Shot, and you can get that at dreallday.com slash P-S-S-S, that stands for Pro Shot Shooting System. Enjoy all day slash P-S-S-S. That's a 150 page book with every piece of information about shooting you could possibly ask. And you can get that book, but I suggest instead of burying yourself in the book and coming up with more questions, go do the work. You don't need 100% of the information before you do work. And that was, that's what holds a lot of people in life back. They're waiting to get more questions answered, get more information, more thinking about it, more analysis, and they never even do anything. Take action, ask questions later. Next question. Champ the First says, Dre on your website says, for $10,000, you can change our outlook on life, basketball, business in 48 hours. How exactly 
do you do that? Has anyone taken you up on this yet? Well, as far as anyone taking me up on it, I can't put anybody's business out there because that'd be between me and that person. So I'm not gonna address that. How exactly do I do that? You would have to get with me and do it. If it was that simple for me to just say how exactly I'm gonna do it, it depends on the person, depends on the situation, depends on the place, location, what this person's life is like now and what they want to change it to, what they plan on doing with themselves. So it takes a whole lot of factors that are all based on the individual. Next question, Stefan Strews says, I blew up my knee in September of last year. I had surgery. I'm starting to run up and down the floor again, but I'm slower. Are there any workouts to get quicker? Yes, the ultimate athlete, 15 week off court training program available at hoophandbook.com written by my trainer, Maria Solon Scout. Next, DeMarcus says, you're the smartest basketball player. Well, thank you. He says, what should I do to stop eating sugar and get in shape for basketball? Because that's all I eat. Oh, any tips for overcoming intense cravings? Well, DeMarcus is not going to be easy. And I'm going to give you the golden secret for you to stop eating sugar. All right, you ready? Write this down. Write it on your phone, whatever. Stop eating sugar. That's it. So this is going to take some discipline and some willpower for you. If you want a more scientific answer, I'm not the one to give it to you. You might need to watch some you know, Tony Robbins or some shit or buy one of his programs or something. But all you got to do is stop doing it. You said, what do you need to do to stop eating sugar? Just stop doing it. There is no, there is no physical force that is forcing you to eat sugar. You just keep doing it because of lack of willpower and a lack of discipline. Willpower and discipline are internal abilities. So you need to develop yours and stop doing the thing that you claim you want to stop doing. Because when you need to stop doing it, you'll stop doing it. As long as it's a want, you might do it and you might not. Next question. Own and only says, every time I get the ball and the defender gets in a low defensive position, I don't know what to do. What should I do? Well, Own and you should work on your game so that you don't have to ask what to do in the game situations. If you have to ask what to do when somebody's playing defense against you, that means you are severely lacking in both game experience and severely, severely lacking in practice time. So you need to do some practice. Get off YouTube. Stop watching this video right now and go work on your game because you really have not done much practice. And if you got to ask, what do I do when somebody's playing defense? Air Game 15 says, I'm in ninth grade. I have a choice of trying out for a grade 10 team or a grade 9 team. On the grade 10, I won't play much. I'm trying to become better. Which team would I recommend you try he try out for? Well, that's a tough question. Because on a ninth grade team, you might get more playing time and be able to develop your your confidence because you get to play and you may excel on that team more than you will in the grade 10 team where you won't play much, but you will have the practice time to play against better players and push yourself. It really depends on, if I was advising a player on that, I would really base it on what I think that player's psyche is like, their mentality. Can they actually handle being on a team where they don't play much, where they might be getting their ass kicked all up and down the court by players who are bigger, better, stronger, and more experienced than them? Air game, I don't know you, so I can't really say that. So you have to ask yourself, do you have it, do you have the mental fortitude to go on the team? Because I would, off rip, I'd say go to the higher team. Because playing on a higher team will help you, you'll figure the game out a lot faster playing with better players than you will playing with players who are at your level. But it's a question of do you have it mentally to take that when you're getting your ass kicked every single day up and down the court and then sitting on the bench in the game. So if you can answer that question, then you'll have the answer to that, to your question. FRGFF says, do you think push-ups affect your game much? And do you do them often or at all? I don't have any equipment, so I do them as sit-ups to gain strength. Do you think it will work? Well, basically reading through his whole question is, you don't have any equipment and all you do is push-ups and sit-ups, then what does it matter if push-ups will work? If that's all you have, then it don't matter, right? You'll make it work because you don't have any other options. Next question, amazing one says, will doing push-ups build muscle how can you get the girl you like to like you? Well, doing push-ups build muscle. Uh, you probably already know the answer to that, so I'm not even addressing that. And he says, how can you get the girl you like to like you? You can't make somebody like you. You have to present yourself as you are, and somebody will like you as long as you keep being who you are. But if you try to be something else, then you're gonna be presenting conflicting images to people, and then maybe you might not get the girl. Young Mo says, Dre, do you know anyone who works harder than you? Uh, I don't think so. 
NBA General says, Dre, I want to know your opinion on last night's game with the Knicks and the Magic. J.R. Smith shot a three and missed. Do you think Melo should have gotten it or taken the last shot? Well, I didn't see the game. I didn't even see the highlights, so I don't have an opinion. Eshwar Tengarala says, how do the great shooters like Curry, KD, and Kobe naturally use the dip, sweep, and sway when shooting and not know it? This implies that they never practice using it. Well, Eshwar, that is completely false. Your question is based on a fallacy. You're saying it implies they never practice using it. That's false. Because if you watch Kobe or Curry or KD practice, then they are definitely using it and they're practicing using it. So your question is uh, based on false information, the false implication that you're making. Kyle Wingo says, if I could play two on two, if I could, me, play two on two with anyone from the NBA for a one week contract, who would it be and who would I choose on my team? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Next question. Daniel Murphy says, Dre, just wondering, what time do you usually get up every day? Do you have any particular routine of the bids? Absolutely have routines. I'm not going to tell you what my routines are because they're kind of like uh, trade secrets for business, for my brand. But, and what time I get up, can't tell you that either. But I was watching this Tony Robbins video a while back and he talks about this. If you want to know why people are where they are in life, whether that be they're successful by your measure, whatever, whatever they do, we're talking about their body, their finances, their business, their relationships, their families, everything, their emotional stability. It's all about people's routines, about their habits, their rituals is what he said. Because if you take somebody who's in really good shape, think about somebody you know who's in really good shape, not yourself, but somebody else. When they wake up in the morning, where is their workout gear? It's probably sitting right there ready for them to put it on. The shoes are right there, the socks, everything's right there for them to put on. And even if they don't really feel like it, they get up and go do whatever. Go to the gym, go for a run, go play basketball, go lift weights. Somebody who's in really good shape, they have a ritual for doing it. Somebody who's in bad shape, they don't have a ritual. They do it whenever they feel like it and they get around to it. And the days they don't feel like it or it's raining or my leg hurt, they do nothing, right? You think about somebody who has, who's great with money. They have rituals. They know that when I get this, I'm going to do this, then I'm going to do this, then I'm going to do this. They have everything already figured out so they don't have to think about it. It's on autopilot. When you're a great athlete, you got it on autopilot that you're going to go work out or you're in great physical shape. Think about somebody who takes care of their body, they eat really well, what are their rituals? They see the candy store, the candy looks good, but they can eat, look at it and pass on it because they know that's not good for their body. They need some vegetables, they eat some vegetables. They want a snack, they eat something that's good for them, not some junk food that's gonna have them crash or add extra calories or empty calories, add extra pounds to their body. So it's all about your rituals. So to answer your question, I didn't really answer it because you asked me questions that I'm just not going to answer. <laughs> But, because they're, like I said, trade secrets in my business and my brand, but every successful person in whatever area in which they're successful, they have rituals and routines for it. Next question. Brandon Hook says, can I watch my video? Can I watch his video? I'm going to have many more coming. I'm trying to get recognized. Well, Brandon, if you got game, the recognition will find you. You don't have to go seeking it. Well, I'll watch your video. I'm going to keep it real, probably not. I don't watch many YouTube videos. Eventually, I'm going to come up with, I'm going to open up an opportunity for players to send me their videos, and I will watch them and analyze them. It is going to cost you because me watching and analyzing the video t is taking my time and it's taking my energy, and neither one of those are free. So hopefully, y'all understand that, and if you don't, then you just don't understand it. I mean, I didn't put out more free content referring to these YouTube videos than anybody you can name. So anybody wants to complain if I want to charge for something, that makes no sense to me. But Brandon, thank you for asking. Just stay tuned to this channel. I will announce that when it's ready. Next question. Last question. It's been a long Q&A. Bradder, Bradder's Wild M says, what's the way to improve your body control so you can finish like Derrick Rose does? By this, I mean switching hands, reversing, or changing a shot around the basket, depending on what the defense does. He says, I can't make these moves unless they're predetermined, which is obviously useless. Is this something I need to directly do, or are there drills that will help? Well, Bradders, while this is the same thing as when I mentioned Kyrie Irving earlier. Derrick Rose is like, what, 25, 26 years old? He's been in the NBA since he was, what, 19? Derrick Rose probably been playing basketball. Before he got to the NBA, he's probably playing basketball, practicing every day for 10 to 15 years. The moves he's doing as highlights in NBA games, 
I'm gonna I'm going to assume that you're not in the NBA. Brad is wild. He was practicing for 15 or so years before he started getting the highlights on the NBA or whatever, high school, whatever. You understand what I'm saying? You can't skip over all those years of work and all of a sudden be doing moves from a highlight of an NBA All-Star, M- NBA All-Star, MVP, gold medal winner player. Uh, you can't skip over all that work he did in between. Because all the work he did in between developed the first of all the fundamentals, then the skills, then the instincts and confidence that he could do those switching hands and reverses and the body control moves that he does in the air on top of his physical gifts, which you just might not have. There ain't too many people with Derrick Rose's physical gifts out there. Now, you can work to improve athleticism, but all you need to understand is some people have some physical gifts that you just don't have. Now, so you might not have his physical tools. There's a pretty good chance that you don't, and there are not many people who do. And again, he put in 10 to 15 years of work before he got NBA highlights. So you want to skip from whatever level you at, whether you in college, high school, playing pickup, a rec leaguer, a weekend warrior, whatever you are, you want to skip over from there all the way to an NBA All-Stars highlight moves. That doesn't make any sense. You got to do all the work in between, which takes not weeks, not months, but years. And the reason why most players end up finishing their basketball lives still talking about the things they want to do because they want to skip over that those years of work that's the hard part that's the part where ain't no highlights ain't nobody giving you no exposure you're not being scouted you're not being recognized you are doing the work every single day with no fanfare and that's the part that people get caught up on and that's actually the part where most players quit because i've seen a lot of players come i've seen a lot of players go everybody loves getting highlights Everybody loves getting recognition and getting seen in the games and getting exposure and getting scouted. But guess what? The hard work that gets done behind closed doors when nobody's paying attention and nobody's cheering for you and there ain't no YouTube video coming out of the workout. Those are the things that make the real difference. You got to be willing to do all that for five to ten years before you worry about doing something Derrick Rose is doing. Because Derrick Rose didn't skip from starting basketball to the NBA and highlights. He did a whole bunch of work in between. So you got to ask yourself if you're willing to do that. If the answer is yes. Don't talk about it. Start doing it. That's it. That's all, everybody. Thank you for the questions this week. Actually, very good questions for the most part. If any of you have a further question or you watching this for the first time or you didn't post a question and you have a question, leave it in the comments to this video. One question per person. If you ask more than one, I may address it. I probably won't. That's it. Work on your fucking game, Dre, all day, dot com. Thanks for checking out this video. Make sure you follow all my top content up here. Follow me on all your favorite social networks right over here. And make sure you are subscribed to catch all the new content I put on on this channel every single day. Work on your game.